Hello everyone. Happy Monday. Um, and happy Thanksgiving week. Um, y'all know Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked right now. <laughs> We're winding down to good old Turkey day. Um, I tell ya, but apparently I'm live, but it's not coming up on here. So hold on just a second. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> there was quite a delay today. Um, 41 second delay. Wow. Um, okay, so we're going to dive right in. Hello, hello, everyone. Hey, Kathy and Verna and Deb. Um, we are going to create three cards um, that are pretty simple, but um, there will be a little die cutting tonight. So I'm going to try to jump right in and get all of that done. Um, the winner from last week was Nedra and I don't, I have your email address, but I don't have your, um, mailing address. So if you'd like to send me your mailing address, you can do that. Um, or I think you were going to try to come to class next month. So if that's the case, then you can just get it then if that works for you as well. So either way is fine. Hello, Sharon. Um, okay. So make sure that you comment, like, share, do all that fun stuff. I have a bolt of ribbon for this week's prize. And this is the copper clay, um, which is one of our current uh, newest in colors. Um, so we've got a bolt of that ribbon that will be next week's prize. So I will put your names in the hat for that. And let's see, I'm going to go ahead and put you guys down on the table. I don't know. I, it, I know. I just say my face and say, hey, and then move you down. <laughs> it makes it easier. <laughs> um, all right. There we go. Um, hey, Cindy, how are you? All right. Got that. So tonight we are going to work with the merriest trees bundle. I know we did trees last week, but we did the kit, the Christmas everywhere kit. Marius Trees is in my top five, and I have not done, I've done a lot with it, but I haven't done a Facebook Live. Not that I saw at all. So, I know we used these when we did the Berry Cute Suite. Um, we used some of the tree stuff, but I wanted to use the whole bundle because what I want to show you guys is that I have a fun fold class using this bundle because again, it's in my top five, with some really fun paper. And this is with the um, Mary Bold and Bright Suite. So it's called Mary Bold and Bright um, DSP, but it's bright, fun colors. And of course, y'all know I like that a lot. So um, this is a to-go class. So it's a fun fold. The class is $65.00. And it includes two bolts of ribbon, make and takes for eight cards, and I'll, I'll show you these in just a minute. We'll walk through them. It includes a full pack of the iridescent adhesive-backed discs. Then it includes a full pack of that Mary Bold and Bright DSP and a full pack of the Granny Apple Green and Melon Mambo foil. Uh, paper. So it comes with a lot of products. Um, and then on top of that, you also get a full PDF and you get a um, video showing how to do a walkthrough of all the fun, fun fold cards. So I'm going to walk you through those really quick. So this one here is just a real simple one. And then you've got this one here, which is a little pull out, little message, you can write your message. This one, and they're starting to stick together because I keep moving them around. So this one is a gatefold. It just opens up like that. And this one, again, it's got the little belly band, but this one opens like that. Now, when you get this make and take packet, 
I will already have the cardstock cut and scored. So all you have to do is cut your DSP and then you'll put that on. And then of course you'll cut out, you'll stamp your images and cut out the images that are included in the bundle. This square back here is not included in the bundle, neither is the sentiment label. So I will cut those and they'll be in your packet for you. So I make it as simple as possible for you. And then you've got this one here. So this one opens up like that. And then you've got this one. And that one opens like that. You can tell which papers I liked the best, <laughs> can't you? <laughs> um, I'm gonna save that one for last. Um, then there's this one here. And when you open this one up, there's actually a little gift card holder on the inside. So you can stick a gift card down there. And then it's just got the extra little flap because you really need to show off all that fun paper with this set. Okay, this is my favorite one, so I left it for last. So this is a card that will actually stand up. So this is your little tree holder, and then you stick it. It's gonna be hard with the <laughs> way I've got it here. And then you stick it there, and it will sit on whoever's desk that you give it to, or, or on the, um, on the um, table, the, you know, where you walk in, your little, where you put your keys. So this will be a fun card to give somebody. So anyway, this is the Fun Fold class. Um, the cost is $65. There is a link in the description of this video if you would like to order it. Um, that link will take you straight to all the products that are used as well so that you can, if you don't have them, you have the ability to purchase them. Any products that you purchase will actually be at cost. So I don't add the shipping or the tax to that. So that is all about that. And I wanted to, again, play with the bundle a little bit more because <laughs> it's one of my favorites. Okay, so there is that. And then we're gonna play with that again later. Um, Tomorrow starts the 60% off sale. There is an email going out. Um, oh, thank you, Cindy. Um, and yes, Nedra, you actually won the prize. So you can either message me or I can um, bring it if you come to class because I don't have your, your address. But I wasn't sure if you're going to come to class or not next time. So if you do, then I can give it to you there. Um, tomorrow starts the last chance products. That means that our holiday catalog... It's going to be retiring soon. Can y'all believe that? <laughs> I am like in shock that we're already to Thanksgiving. Um, this year has flown by. Um, so it starts tomorrow. There is an email that I have that will go out um, in the morning. So if you are a customer of mine, that it is there um, so that you'll have the link and all that stuff to go straight to those 60% last chance products. Well, up to 60%. Some things won't be 60% because they're carrying over into a new catalog or they'll become an online exclusive. So um, then Paper Pumpkin. I love Paper Pumpkin. You know, I do one Facebook Live every, or not Facebook, YouTube Live every month doing our Paper Pumpkin. So this month is called All the Best and it comes with nine cards, uh, three, three designs and three each. Um, so, and then it'll also come with the acetate box for you to put those cards in and you could give as a gift to someone. But Paper Pumpkin is a fantastic uh, way to get started if you are new at crafting. That's a way to kind of start getting products built up and kind of starting to craft a little bit to see what it's all about. So, um, so that is that. In December, December the 2nd is my monthly class. And after class at one o'clock, we will be playing bingo. And y'all know how much I love some bingo. Um, we are gonna use the festive kit. It's gonna be a kit bingo. And um, we're gonna use the festive kits tag, uh, tags kit. So you'll get to make all three, six, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 40, 15 tags. You'll get to make all 15. Plus you will get to make an additional four cards. Okay, so I will have the products everything in a little baggie for you in order to make these four cards in addition to all the tags that come in your kit. So, um, if you are interested in that, 
I believe there's a link in the description. If there's not, I'm sorry, and I'll make sure I get it there. <laughs> um, I uh, did get a lot done this weekend, but I still feel like I'm behind for some reason. Um, and then club, I'm working on finishing up club um, just because I did, you know, get a little behind. But we're going to be making a calendar for club for December so that you can have a calendar that will sit on your desk for January through December of 2024. So in saying that, we're gonna use the days to remember and I will have all of this ready for you guys to see next Monday. Um, I'm finishing up the last half of the year and then I'm waiting on a couple things to come in so I can kind of show you the whole full product. So anyway, so this is um, the club that will be for next month. It will include products. Um, I'm probably going to go back to the annual cat. Um, I've gone back to the, I'm not probably, I have gone back to the annual catalog just to make sure that things don't sell out. So, <laughs> um, so just know that it will be annual product, um, an annual catalog, like paper and then stuff like that. Um, but there's going to be a mix match of a bunch of different papers. So it'll be fun. But anyway, so days to remember $39 for club. And that link will be coming out as soon as I finish putting all that together. Um, and I think that's it. I know that was a lot tonight and I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so anyway, I have a lot going on in my business and you know, so I try to tell you guys all about it. All right. So Marius trees, y'all know I love me some trees and every year I actually do a rainbow tree card because you know, I love doing the different colors. This year, I actually did not. I think this is the first in like four, wait, nope, three years that I haven't done one. A multi-tree, multi-color tree card. But before we get started, I was going to show you a couple. We did this card on a YouTube Live using the Very Cute, because that's the presents from the Very Cute. Um... Gosh, I think it was like two months ago, maybe. It was right when maybe the catalog first kind of came out. But anyway, so we did that, and there's the, the tree from it, so just the die cut. And then this was our bingo, my catalog kickoff bingo card, which of course shows the same paper that we're using tonight, which I love. And then this card right here, for those of you who don't know, I'm a part of a large tutorial bundle every single month, and this will be my December card. So you'll get the measurements and the products that I used for that in that tutorial. You get that tutorial when you spend $50 with me in my online store before tax and shipping, and then I email that big tutorial to you. And then I'm gonna show you this one at the end because I have one other card that I'm gonna make on Friday, and I'm gonna try to do it as a Facebook Live. We'll see. <laughs> if not, it'll be a video that I post. So, um, just know that. Um, but there will be one more card coming um, for that. I know, Cindy, you know that, that set, hold on, where did I just put it? The days to remember, I'm gonna be honest with you. When I first got it, and I got it when it first came out, I was very confused by it. <laughs> I had to watch several videos in order to figure it out, but I absolutely love it now because I think it is absolutely perfect. And one of my favorite features of it is that it has the Monday through Sunday, but then it also has Sunday through Saturday. I am a, um, a Monday through Sunday girl. That's how I like my calendars to be lined up. So this was perfect. <laughs> um, so that's one of my favorite features of that stamp set. But yes, it's a very useful and fantastic. Okay, I had to get a drink of water because I've talked a lot. Okay, first card. I am super excited about this. This was part of a training that I took um, with one of the top 10 demonstrators in Stampin' Up. Um, her name is Rhonda Wade, and I take her monthly training. Well, she does, at the beginning of every catalog, she does a big training for us 
where we get like samples and we get to create and do all that stuff. So this card right here is based off of that training that she did for us. Um, of course, I changed it up a little bit because, well, that's what I do. <laughs> I never can be satisfied with just what I get. I always have to change it. Um, that's my personality, I guess. So, but this is one of those book cards, which I love. I really am falling in love with these. Um, and you can find the blog post to this online. It is there. It is already up. At least last time I checked. Hey, Kathy. Um, so if it's not there, Verna, please let me know. <laughs> um, but you can get all the measurements and all the products you use right there on that um, blog post. Um, there's a link that you can click that'll take you so you can write down all the products that I used. So I try to make it easy for you. Um, and then it has a big old picture up there for you. Okay, so let's get started with this one. And I'm going to show you a couple tricks. So we're going to fold this in half. And I'm just gonna give it some good creases. That's not how it's gonna lay out yet. But I just wanna make sure that we are doing some good folding. All right, so this is gonna go this way. Well, somehow, somehow I did not to score right. Y'all know me. Okay, that scored right and that one has scored right that okay so apparently i just have it too long um we are going to scrap and start over <laughs> oh my goodness all right hold on two seconds i have to see if i have i know i've got there it is all right and then i'm gonna grab i'm gonna grab this and we're gonna cut it again. I don't know what I did. Maybe it's too long. Let's just check it before I scrap it. Nope, that is right. So yeah, I scored it wrong. Okay, so you're gonna cut it. I guess this will be a good lesson for us to teach cutting, right? So we're gonna need half of the cardstock, but this, normally I cut mine so that it's hamburger like but we need a hot dog one and so we're gonna go to four and a quarter and then we're gonna cut it then I'm gonna go find my measurements really quick <laughs> yes yes it does oh good thank you Verna okay let me go to my blog post and make sure I even have the right measurements on there for you maybe if it'll let me go There we go. All right, so it's gonna take me just a second. It lets me pull it up pretty quickly. All right, and home. And read more. Okay, so I know we have to score it at five and a half because five and a half is halfway for us. And then, we are gonna score it at six and three fourths. So then we're gonna score it down here. And we're gonna make sure that these measurements are right because they still don't look right. And that is right. <laughs> okay, that is right. Okay. So, so again, it was at five and a half and then six and three fourths. And I have no idea where I scored that at. So we're gonna fold that over, give it a good crease. And then I'm just gonna fold this one back since I'm already there. And there we go. Okay, so we've got that. That's our card base. Now we're gonna open it up and here, I'm gonna put three strips of tear and tape. And I'm a tear and tape girl when it comes to this or seal, cause y'all know I don't do well with liquid glue. I um, am pretty horrible with liquid glue. So I, um, it will smush out and I'll be wearing it and my fingers will be all sticky. All right, so I'm gonna put three there. 
And then we're gonna peel off the backs. Okay, then I'm going to take my Parakeet Party ribbon, which is the ribbon from that class, and we're going to give ourselves enough ribbon to tie a bow. We're going to lay this flat on the inside, on that center, um, center tear and tape. Okay, so now it's good and adhered down. Now, I'm gonna take another piece of tear and tape and I'm just gonna run it right over that ribbon. Now, a lot of people do thicker ribbons in there, which is totally fine. I like the thinner one because then it doesn't bulk as much when you fold it over. So now I'm gonna take off that paper and now I'm gonna fold it over. And then I'm gonna press it really good you can even use your bone folder. That'll help it very nicely. Okay, now we're gonna just take and leave that like that. We're gonna take our first piece of DSP and we're gonna adhere it right there. Maybe. I think I've lost a bunch of stuff over here. <laughs> I've been pulling and trying to arrange and I keep moving everything. All right, so then we're gonna attach this here like that. Ta-da! And now we can take our ribbon and tie our bow. Y'all know I struggle live with the bows, but I'm gonna get it. I just know it. All right. Then I'm gonna go ahead and trim off my area over here. Then I'm just gonna get this good and tight, adjust it, and then we'll just cut both of them. Oops. We'll cut both of them. <laughs> there we go. All right, so you can do your bow whichever way you would like to. I'm gonna do it like that for now. Now remember, when you do your bow, wherever, because you have this entire side taped, so wherever you tie the bow, that's where it's gotta stay, because if you start pulling, it's gonna take it and rip your, your cardstock part, okay? All right, so we've got that piece there. Now I'm going to add in a piece over here and we're gonna do the fun lights I love the little Christmas lights there are two different versions of the Christmas light so there are thin ones that are a little bit more pointier and then you have the thick rounder ones which you can find at all your stores which was kind of cool they did both versions okay so let me ask you a question I know this is like, <laughs> and this is actually going to be my, my Facebook post for, um, for next week, but I'll go ahead and ask y'all. Are you a colored Christmas tree lights kind of person, or are you a white light kind of person? I personally am a white. <laughs> I like all white lights on my Christmas tree. Now, when I was a kid, I liked the darker ones. I mean, I liked the colored ones, but... Now as an adult, I just like the, <laughs> the simple, <laughs> simple and elegant. Okay, so before we put on our vellum, what I wanna go ahead and do is I wanna go ahead and do our trees. And the reason for that is when I put those on top of our vellum, when I go to adhere the vellum to the top, then I can place the adhesive on the back of it. Um, oh, really, Kathy? Why does that not shock me that you like the bigger, <laughs> the bigger colored lights? That does actually does not shock me, I guess. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, y'all are actually shocking me on the colored. I'm surprised. All right, we're going to do our sentiment right here on our solid tree. 
And then we are gonna actually leave that open for just a minute longer. We're gonna stamp our big tree because there's only one tree image in our stamps and it's this one right here, but then you can cut it out to make it different layers like I did here, okay? So we're gonna stamp this and we're gonna stamp this in Lemon Lolly. Oh, really, Deb? And let me guess, <laughs> only because I know Mike so well now. <laughs> um, you have you have ones that actually do all of it, like on a timer and like by a switch, don't you? I would be shocked if it's <laughs> if it's not that way. <laughs> kind of like those, you know, it would be the lights that kind of match your your mood for the day, right? One of those mood rings. All right, so we've got that stamped down. Now I'm going to take the old olive. I'm going to take the detailed part of the tree and we are going to stamp right here on top like that. So it gives it a little bit more definition in your tree. Then we're going to go ahead and pull in. Oh, you know what? Before we do that, let's do our stars because then we can cut all at the same time. Well, we'll have to send the stars through again, but that will work. Oh, I was right. <laughs> I know him well, make it easy, right? All him and his little technology stuff. <laughs> Girl, if I could do that, I would too. Cause the kids, the kids love, the nieces love the colored lights still. Um, but, I, of course, like the white. So that would be good to find some like that. <clears throat> I'm sure they're on every corner now, right? Okay, so we're gonna bring in our little machine here. We're gonna put our tree there. I'm gonna find the dies. And then we're gonna cut, so if you notice, you have one tree that you stamp, but then with your dies, you've got multiple multiple layers here and you're going to see we're going to play with that that part of it um soon so i want to take this one here and then we're just going to line it up here and i'm going to tape it down just because i'm going to also grab the star and we're going to stick one star on Let me grab another little piece. Okay, and then we're gonna run this through. And take that off. I'm gonna put my dies back on there so I don't lose them. And then we've got one here. I think it might be time for new plates. I'm trying to hold off. Well, one plate. I do all of my embossing on this one plate and then when it gets so bad, then I switch to this one. So I'm not using as many plates, I guess. Seems to work for me. I know um, Angie does it that way too. All right. So now we have all of our little pieces here. And then we'll move this out the way. Yay. Okay. So then we have all of our little trees here. Now I'm going to take a glue dot and I'm going to attach these to the top of our trees. Oh, look at there, I'm out of that one. <laughs> We're gonna take and attach right there to the top. And then we're gonna do the same to this one. And 
Okay. Now I'm going to take and adhere this one flat to our card or to our vellum card stock. And I'm going to put, I'm going to put another glue dot right there just to make sure it stays. And this is gonna go back here in the background, off a little bit to the right, but then all the way down. Like that, okay. And then we're gonna take this one and we're gonna pop it up. And I'm going to need probably a little dimensional Actually, let's do this. Let's do some cutting. We're going to stick this up here, right there. All right, and then this one is going to sit up a little higher and then a little off to the left. Okay? Now, when I flip this over, you can now see through that. So now we can put all of our adhesive on here to make sure that it doesn't show through our vellum cardstock. Okay. And then we're just gonna stick that right there on the front. All right, last but not least, let's add our embellishments. And I moved all of the stuff, moved the embellishment and the ribbons back over to the other side of the, the office. I forgot to take them out. Okay, hold on. I got to get it unstuck. There we go. All right, we're going to take our take your pick tool. And we are going to do these little ones here. And here, oops. And then there. And then we're gonna do the same color down on this one. All right. Okay. And last but not least, we're gonna put in our piece on the inside. But I want to stamp the sentiment and we're gonna stamp that in Poppy Parade. Oh, that's probably a good idea, uh, good idea, Deb. I probably really should do that. Yeah, the foil paper. Um, so I was cutting with the um, um, holographic paper. And man, I should have used brand new plates because I like literally got my one piece, but then the whole rest of it was <laughs> all kind of janky looking. So yeah, probably need to do that. but I'm sometimes a little lazy. <laughs> and you know, more work sometimes. <laughs> but I should, I really should, because I would ruin, I mean, yeah, you ruin your foil papers and those specialty papers without doing it. All right, so we're gonna fold that over. And then we're gonna stick this on the inside. And then you are all set to go. Now, when you put your tree on the front, make sure that you don't, like I'm very close to that line there. So just make sure that you don't put the tree in the fold. Otherwise it'll bend up your tree. But there is card number one. Yay. I, yeah, I am really starting to fall in love with the, with the um, book cards. I've seen a lot of them and they are a lot of fun. Okay. So that was card number one. Now we're gonna move on to card number two, which I'm gonna tell you this before I show you the card. This one is so far out of my normal, completely outside of my normal. So here it is. <laughs> Y'all know I do simple. <laughs> this is not simple. Um, I was actually, pretty inspired when I started playing with this card and I literally just kept adding to it. I could not stop. This is our paste and I literally just chunked it on there. So it looks like snow. I don't know if it really does or not, but to me it did. So I went with it. 
Um, and then I cut all these individual pieces. So far from simple, <laughs> far from simple, but I ended up falling in love with it. I love this card here. I love the colors of it. Um, and our sentiment is coming from Regal Reindeer because I really wanted a Merry Christmas. So, all right. Now, I am gonna say this. I haven't used the paste in a really long time. Really, really long time. And it might have been, it might be a little dry, but it actually worked out to my favor because then I was able to um, kind of chunk it up a little bit better. So just as an FYI, the dryer, now you don't want it so, so dry that you can't even get it out, but mine's probably gonna need to be replaced. <laughs> So anyway, um, but it worked to my favor this time. This is the um, country, I'm gonna make sure I say it right, y'all. No, the Garden Walk DSP, which has some amazing patterns in here. And this has actually got lots of different like holidays in it. So you could do Christmas with actual Christmas colors. This was the other one I thought about doing for our, for the background, but this was very similar to what I used last week, so I didn't. <laughs> so, I went with this one instead. All right, so we are going to get our little gloobers off of there, and I am going to have to use some liquid glue just because I want to make sure I get it straight on my card front. All right, we'll put that down. We're gonna make sure it's all lined up. All right, there we go. Now, for this, <laughs> I have this piece of paper right here. I'm making sure I'm on the right side there, okay. Now, I want to create some hills, but we don't really have any die sets that are like major, um, like hills, kind of like what I would want. Um, so, we're going to cut our own. So, pray real hard. <laughs> um, I also find that it's easier to do with a larger pair of scissors instead of doing it with our little um, paper snips because these are great for fussy cutting because they're so small, but this, because I need it to go all the way across, it's definitely easier to do with big ones. So I'm just gonna start right about here, and then I am just gonna wing it, which for those of you who know me is really hard to do, and we're just going to create a snowy bank. Now, the great thing is, when I cut it, guess what? Now we have it on the other side too. And now I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> now this is way too long, okay? So I need it to be probably about like that. And actually I don't really like that part of it. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do a little edge there. Perfect. Okay, so this is gonna come down right about there. And then that's gonna go right about there. So in order to Make sure I get this right. I'm just gonna kind of mark with a, well, I had a pencil, but I don't. So I'm just gonna take, and this is literally just so I know I can cut it. I'm just gonna make a little tick mark right there. And I'm gonna grab my little mini cutter and I'm gonna line that up, that little tick mark that I made right there. And then I'm just gonna chop it off. Doesn't have to be exact. Um, nothing like that. Now we're going to take and adhere this flat onto our card front. And we're going to go back to our trusty seal. And line it up. We want to make sure we line it up on the edge and the bottom. Okay. Now, we're going to then take our Poppy Parade tree here, and we've got all these pieces to go with it. I went ahead and cut these out beforehand, okay? 
And we are going to use our bone folder. We actually don't have to do it on the bottom one. But we're gonna take our bone folder and kind of turn up that edge. Because we want it to stick out. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, you probably made, <laughs> oh, I'm so glad, Deb. <laughs> um, I may have like destroyed the first ones and it's cause I overthink it. Um, so I have to like not overthink cutting those hills. Um, but, <laughs> um, so you want, this is a card though that you probably don't want to put in the mail cause it will squash it. Um, so it's probably one that you want to um, hand deliver to somebody because it does have the um, different layers in it. Cause you can see already from the laying stuff on top of it, that one's already kind of flattened out some. So, um, that being said, we're now going to take and flip this over. We're going to put a little bit of adhesive only at the top because you want that part to continue being there. Then you're going to line it up at the top here. Maybe now my fingers are getting a little anxious. All right, there we go. Okay. And we're going to do it to this one here. And then one more. Okay. Now we're going to stick, and you can see that side is cut off, but that's okay because this is going to tuck down underneath anyway. And so I want to make sure that my placement is going to be okay. Um, so we're going to stick this here, right about here. And we're going to put that, that little edge all the way up to the edge of the tree up to the edge of the fold of the card. Okay. So now I'm going to flip it all over and I'm going to put adhesive on the back. Make sure I pop those back out. And then we're going to line this up and we'll trim off the excess of the tree that's over there. All right. So then we'll just take our paper snips and chop right up. Now, we are gonna take our other snowbank here and we are going to use dimensionals to pop it up because it needs some space behind it. And I'm gonna try not to be, okay, we're putting it on there. I was gonna try not to use so many, but I can't help it. I'm an addict when it comes to dimensionals for real. Like I cannot, I use a ton of them. Okay, so I'm gonna line this up with the corner and the edge just like I did the other one. And ta-da, there we go. Now we are going to do our Calypso Coral. And again, this one's just gonna go flat, so it will be, um, it'll be like right there. So we want to do our other pieces like that. We're gonna go ahead and put our adhesive on here and then line it up. Okay, and do our adhesive and our curl, which you call a curl technique, I guess. All right, now on this one, my top part is gonna be real skinny. So this one is really kind of hard to pop it up or to give it that curl effect, but you can give it a little bit, um, but it's not gonna give it much. So just know that. And then we're gonna attach it. Like that. Now, only part of this is gonna be um, popped up. So it looks like it's just going to be from this layer up. So we're just going to put dimensionals halfway. And we're going to put some adhesive right there. And let's cut an edge here. And we'll adhere it there. Okay. Okay. 
and my fingers my fingers are sticky because of the liquid glue <laughs> um, it doesn't matter if I don't use a lot I will get sticky hands all the time okay so we've got those there now now I'm going to go ahead let's go ahead and do our sentiment and then we will do the um, embossing paste okay so we want that and then we want poppy parade And I'm going to stamp it there. And we're gonna flip that over because I got the edge. And there we go. I'm gonna bring in my little machine. So y'all can see my little blue one. I love the blue baby mini one. Okay, we're gonna use a die from the stylus shapes. I'm going to grab a piece of tape. And then we're going to roll it through. And And then I'm going to show you a little trick on putting our ribbon behind it because I didn't want it to be real bulky up there at the top. So we're going to take our Calypso Coral ribbon and we're going to put some adhesive right here in the center. Then I'm going to create one loop like I would if I was gonna start the tying of a bow. Then I'm just gonna lay it right there on that center, okay? Then I'm gonna just twist and make another little bow um, loop up there at the top. So we have our little loop. And now we have a flat bow that will not bulk up our card. It still gives it a little bit of bulk, but not nearly as much if you tied a knot to create that bow. And now we're gonna pop it up right here on our card. And then the great thing is that you can make it smaller or make it bigger, however you choose. And then you can trim off your extra little tails. I might need to get some new scissors over here. Okay. Let me grab another pair here. All right, and then we're gonna trim that. There we go. And then I think that's good enough there. All right, so there we go. Now we're going to try some paste. <laughs> I'm gonna grab my silicone mat too, just so that it kind of helps me Um, you know, oh, I was going to say, I thought I had a card that I had heat embossing on and I do. It's the last one. Oh, goodness gracious. I felt like I had already done it and then missed it on the first card. All right. So see, if you look at my paste, it's kind of getting hard. Um, it should not be that hard, but that is a okay. All right, now I'm gonna try to not to get as much on here, um, but I wanted you to kind of see, because you do need to wipe it off pretty quickly so that it doesn't dry and get hard and then ruin your spatula. So I'm gonna take the back end and I'm gonna get a little bit right there. And then I'm literally just gonna take it and just pat it down onto the card front, okay? And then I'm just gonna keep repeating that until it's all done. Cause I don't want it to look like it's, you know, I want it to look like it was real snow that kind of bunches up around your, around your house and wherever else. And you can kind of pick some of it up and dig it and whatever. <laughs> 
I know those are not like real proper terms for it, but. And then once you're finished with it, you wanna make sure that you set it aside to dry. I really cannot answer how long it takes to dry only because usually when I use the paste, I just kind of sit it overnight and then, you know, come back to it the next morning and it's completely done. Okay. So I think I'm good with that part of it. And now I'm going to go across the bottom of our tree here. We also have shimmery. But, <laughs> funny thing about that is it was completely dried up. So we went with the white. <laughs> um, but you could always add some glitter into it if you wanted to, for sure. Um, you could add in um, colors to it. You can make colors with the um, embossing paste. I love embossing paste. Um, I've made several cards, I haven't in a long time. Um, you know, new things come out and you get excited and all the pretty things and then you forget about what was there before. Um, but I used to take our masks and use our embossing paste and create those, um, create backgrounds um, with color and that kind of stuff. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna flip it around I'm just gonna take a little bit, and I'm not really leaving a whole lot of paste on the tree itself. I'm just kind of tapping it to give it the look of it. And then maybe like one little area that's got like a chunk of it. And then we're gonna add a little chunk here to the top. Cause that's really where your kind of snow collects is up there at the top. All right, and then we'll do this one. And let's do a little bit there. This will definitely take you the longest to do, is that embossing paste. But it's so worth it in the end, in my opinion anyway. All right, so we've got that. Let's do, oops, let's do the rest of this one. Sorry. I'm going to do it real quick. Oops. Well, that had a lot of snow on it. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, so I'm going to be done with that. And then I'm going to scrape it off really good. Seal it back up. And then ta-da. Oh, that is fine, Phyllis. Um, cool use of the, oh, thank you, Cindy. Yes. <laughs> um, I was looking at a whole bunch of like just Christmas tree cards from past years that I've done. And, you know, I saw some where we had like, I don't know, other things that kind of like built it up. It was like that puffy paint stuff. And so it, I was like, why not use the, the embossing paste? Anyway, um, so that's kind of where it came from. All right, so last but not least, I just need to add the embellishments, but I'm gonna leave those off until all this dries, and then I will come back and put those embellishments on. So that will be what your final card looks like, okay? And I'm gonna set this aside so I don't end up putting it anywhere <laughs> so that I mess it all up, which of course I did right then. Okay, so that is card number two. Now let's go on to card number three. This is the last card for tonight. Thank you, thank you. All right, this one is just a very basic. Um, I, although I say basic, it's not really because I heat embossed on it, but um, we're gonna do our card base here, which is Cherry Cobbler, which I haven't used in a while. All right, and then we're gonna set that aside. We're gonna bring in this little piece right here. And we're gonna do our embossing on it. And just be careful when you do your embossing, don't go back and forth on these little strips or you're gonna bend it. Um, that's what I did <laughs> yesterday when I was creating this card. Um, I completely bent it 
like all like in multiple places trying to get the powder on it so and you probably don't need that much powder but I have really oily fingers and I've been touching it a lot so all right so now we're gonna take our sentiment and we're gonna stamp it in some Versamark and our sentiment is to you and yours and I'm going to I'm gonna stamp it upside down just so I can see it a little bit better and I'm gonna put it down here. Nope, I'm gonna put it down here. Nope, I was right, down here, sorry. Um, I'm gonna put it down here, but I don't wanna put it like in the center or I wanna make sure that I'm closer to this part here um, when I'm stamping it upside down. If you are stamping it right side, then you want to put it um, closer to the bottom part. You'll see what I mean as soon as I stamp it if maybe I can get my head out of the way. Okay, so you'll see it when I put some powder on it, but it's kind of, it's got just barely a little bit of room at the top. That's what you want because this part's how you're gonna adhere it to your basic white piece once we do our stamping. All right, and now we're gonna take our handy dandy heat tool And we're gonna start it, maybe. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. What did I forget, y'all? The powder. <laughs> oh, man. All right. I was trying to give you too many instructions and my brain went wacky. All right, there we go. Now we can heat it up. <laughs> All right. And it doesn't take very long to heat it up, but it does take just a minute because you want to make sure that you get all of it to be shiny. All right. There we go. Okay, so this is going to attach to our basic white piece once we do our stamping. So I brought in my piercing mat, which is to me kind of just a foam mat for me to stamp on. I don't really pierce on it. I never have actually. Um, so, but it is called a piercing mat. Okay, we're gonna grab some colors going on here. So we're gonna take Old Olive. Now earlier I stamped this in Lemon Lime Twist, but we're gonna clean it just because, well, just because. Sometimes, sometimes when you have a lighter color and you go to a darker color, it's fine to not ink it or to clean it, but with my luck, something will go wonky. So, all right, so now we're just gonna stamp this Kind of closer to the top, but you want to make sure you leave room for your star. And if it's not perfect, it'll be okay. At least that's what I try to tell myself. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Then we're going to take Garden Green. I'm going to clean it. I have a pile of inks over here. And we're gonna ink that up. And then we're just gonna stamp right on over it. So it's gonna give it that darker detailed part of it. Like that. Okay. Now we're going to add the star at the top. We're going to do that in crushed curry. And I am leaving a little bit of space in between things. And why am I doing that? Because the tree itself has the white spaces in between. So I felt like it kind of moved 
or was a little bit smoother with having those little bit of white spaces in between the star and the trunk of the tree as well. Um, I did it with that present there, um, but I got a little close on that one. So anyway, but that's kind of why I'm doing a little bit more spacing than normal, just so you know. All right, and then we're gonna do pecan pie for the trunk. And now we're gonna do some presents. Okay, this is the fun part. You can make all kind of different colors that you would want. I went with kind of what I was already using just so that it made it a little easier. We're gonna take the old olive actually. And we're gonna do this little ribbon or this little bow here like that. And then we're going to do pretty peacock. With this one. And I'm not making the presents level on the bottom either. And then we're going to take pretty peacock again. And we're going to do there. And then that last one is going to be in a flirty flamingo. All right, then we're gonna do flirty flamingo over this present here. And we're gonna take that little tied bow Oh, thank you, Kathy. And we're gonna do this in the cherry cobbler. Ta-da. Okay, now we are going to move this out the way. We're gonna flip it over and our sentiment is gonna go along here. So I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna add some adhesive right there. Then I'm gonna bring this in and we're just gonna line it up to the edge. Cause really what I've done here is I have cut the card base. So you know most of your card bases that you put on the front of your card are um, four by five and a quarter. So what I did was I cut enough here so that I could have a quarter. So it would be, so this is cut to three and three fourths, and then this gives you to the four. So I hope that makes sense. Um, but you can line it up to be, you know, more or less or whatever works for you. So, all right, so then we'll flip that over. We're gonna put lots of dimensionals on it because, well, I did on the <laughs> sample. I couldn't stop because of the jut out for some reason. I feel like it needs more when it has that little piece out to the side. Okay, we're gonna leave it at that. And then we'll stick this on the front. And in the trash bucket, those go. All right, so now we're gonna stick this on like that. And then this is just gonna go on the inside. I didn't actually stamp it, but you definitely could restamp those presents if you wanted. That would be fun to put on the inside. And I put a little bit of that adhesive too close to the edge. So we'll open it up. And then there we go. All right, and then that is the last card for tonight. Now, as always, this is a class that you can purchase if you spend $35 in my online store. Before tax and shipping, I will mail the make and take packets for you. Um, I will tell you, I probably would not cut these out for you. I would just send you the cardstock. So you would need to have the dies um, and, the, um, and the stamp set because I can't stamp any images for you. But those are our three cards for tonight. I think they are very different. Um, I tried to kind of more or less try to hit as many personalities as I could <laughs> 
for it because you know a lot of people are classic Christmas colors some are bright and fun and then you know some are different and so I really felt like these three really show um, how versatile this stamp set can be and the dies can be now I'll have one more card for you again I will try to go live on Friday I cannot promise you that but um, if I can't, there will be a video that will be put up on Friday on both Facebook and YouTube um, for you to see. But this will be the card that we make on Friday. This is a design that I did back in July for Christmas in July. So I kind of stole my layout and then changed up the front um, and added the Christmas tree instead of the sleigh um, that we had on it. So. Um, so some of you took that class <laughs> and so some of you have seen this layout before, but it is literally using the same DSP and the same like sentiment there as well. I just changed and put the Christmas tree there. So that will be coming on Friday. And then let's see, where did I put all the other cards at? Oh, here they are. And then here are the other ones that we have done in the past at different classes or whatnot. Um, but yeah, this is definitely in my top five, probably within my top two stamp sets or bundles in the in the mini catalog. And then don't forget, when you do spend $50 before tax and shipping, this tutorial actually gets mailed out to you, emailed out to you. Now this will be for the month of December. So that will be coming in December. Um, and you'll have many more projects that are in that tutorial bundle as well from demonstrators from all over. So, all right, everyone, that is it for tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. I had lots of fun, especially learning about Christmas lights for some of you. <laughs> um, and I will, I will be here next week um, live and I have no idea what we're going to do yet. I'm thinking on that one. Um, it will pro it might be the online exclusive one. Um, I might need to take a break from Christmas <laughs> since it will be Thanksgiving. And that, again, is my favorite holiday. So um, I hope you guys have a great evening and a great Thanksgiving. Eat lots of turkey or ham or whatever it is that you eat. And I hope you have a great time with friends and family um, and uh, your loved ones. So I will see y'all later. Bye.